Hey everybody, welcome back to Small Talk Japan. On this show, we talk about all things Japan in English. My name is Mitch, this is my co-host. Josh. And we're going to talk about a lot of fun things today. Yeah. We're going to talk about how China went a little pew 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 had a little explosions and military stuff, and talk about that. Yeah. We're going to talk about how Japan is mulling, eyeing, considering. Thinking about. Thinking about. Chewing. <laughs> digesting. Sitting on uh, reducing COVID-19 as an incredible, like, new, crazy, scary virus just being, like, a common cold kind of situation. We're also going to get an update on my boy. My boy who took all that COVID-19 money. Remember that one? Yeah. We got a great update about him. Travel is getting better thanks to Jal people. And we got some fun stories, too. Yeah, we got Sumo, the JSA, looking to create an English YouTube channel. Sumo. Uh, we got some hair donation booming in Japan. That's but, nice. But, but there's but some problems. There are some problems. Uh, a couple of sad stories. like Oh, you took some sad stories this time. Yeah, I did. Uh, about a Japanese pawn owner who breaks into tears after 3,000 of his fish die in a robbery. Oh, God. I, yeah, yeah. And we got some other fun stories. Roll that intro. All right, so today, since we were planning a, um, an event, like we got this event, a summer camp coming up. Summer camp. So my phone is probably going to be buzzing the whole time that we're doing the show. I apologize if that happens. But, you know, everybody's freaking out. We're, it's, it's not tomorrow. It's the next day. But tomorrow, everybody probably wants to have a day off. So, I have work tomorrow. Shut up. Shut up, you. <laughs> shut up, you. Be quiet, you. We're not talking about you. Let's talk about the other teachers. They want, they want uh, the day off, so they're all like trying to get everything done now. So yep. they don't have anything to do tomorrow. So they can just like relax before the two days of summer camp. Oh, I'm looking forward to summer camp, though. <laughs> I'm actually really looking forward to summer camp, too. But because we, in order, I don't know if you guys know this. We'll, we'll actually, we'll just kind of get into this. Before we get to the China thing, let's just go talk about COVID in Japan. Now, if you guys didn't know this, we didn't talk about this last week because we had Norm on the show. And we talked about mostly Norm stuff. But uh, COVID numbers in Japan have been, what's the word? Um, exploding, right? Everybody and their mom has COVID now. Yeah. And so, like, and people who had it are getting it again and stuff like that. So... Basically, in order to make this uh, event that we're doing day after tomorrow, I had to basically, which by the time that this airs, will be the day of the event. Yeah. Time that this goes on air, this will be the day of the event. But anyway, in order to, to make that event, because I, you know, everybody in the school, on the school side of things, I own a school and we have a production company. Uh, the school, I just basically don't go there because I'm always meeting people from outside of the prefectures. I'm traveling a lot, you know, whatever. So I just don't go there. He's having fun. I mean, sometimes it's fun. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it's fun. <laughs> Uh, but I meet a lot of people, and so I've, I've been for two and a half years, like, during the pandemic, pretty at risk of getting it. And uh, and uh, so I just basically don't go to the school, right. right? But suddenly we get this event. Whose idea was this event? That was my idea. <laughs> and so, like, no, actually, what happened was, like, because th this year, too, we were just like, no, we're not going to do any events because, you know, the, the situation. And and I... I, I sat down with the vice principal of the of the of the school, uh, Kyoka, and I was like, and I was like, we were literally locked in this room for like six hours, and I just sat her down. And I looked at her, and I was like, summer camp, let's do it. And she looked at me, she said, no, this is like I don't know, April or May or something like that. And I'm like, summer camp, let's do it. She's like, no, we can't. It's, it's not possible. We can't do it safely. I'm like, summer camp, let's do it. I mean, that, literally, just that was the conversation for like six hours. She just kept telling me all the reasons why we couldn't do it, mm -hmm. and eventually she started thinking about how we could do it safely. And then eventually we started planning it and then we're doing it. Yeah. Which is cool because the poor kids for three years, they haven't had any memories or, well, I mean, I'm sure that they've had some memories, but they haven't had anything from us anyways. Right. And like as the, you know, foreign people in their lives, I mean, that's assuming a lot, but I'm pretty sure that we're pr pretty much the only foreign people in our lives. You know, we, we provide that international uh, cultural exchange. And part of that is the events, right? We have like, you know, um, we do like the English kitchen. Right. One of my favorite ones that we took all the kids to this Mexican restaurant. And one of she's a local woman who lives here. She's from Mexico. She makes Mexican food. Uh, her boss is actually uh, Peruvian, you know, the people with the flutes. I'm kidding. I've never actually been there. I don't know anything about the country, <laughs> but I don't like Peruvian food as much as I like Mexican food. Right. And so, and the owner is like my, one of my great friends. We drink together all the time. Uh, but anyway, I always, I always tease him. I'm like, Hey, Peruvian food. Let's just give up on that. Let's just do Mexican food. The cook is Mexican. Right. And he's like, no, it's my home heritage, blah, blah. I don't know. Something important to him. Whatever. <laughs> Tell it to, I love you. Um, anyway. And so the, the kids went to this Mexican restaurant and they're all making like, you know, it was, it's a little Tex-Mex what they were making, but it was, you know, kind of like the, the, the real recipe was alt altered a little bit for, you know, their, their sensibilities and things like that. But they basically made Mexican food. 
and then they ate it together like that and the kids their parents it was really really fun right you know the kids really enjoy that stuff yeah and they'll and they we take video and fo- photos of it and like they'll remember this for the rest of their lives you know and then we do like christmas every year it's like a wedding like 150 people show up santa comes we have like turkeys we make the dads carve the turkeys in front of everybody and that's always hilarious because japanese people are foodies they all love food and they all like to talk about food it's like tv is like 99 percent food yeah it really is it really is but a lot of the japanese people uh, especially where we live have never had turkey before and they've never if they have they've only had it in like lunch meat form or something they've never seen a real like and a we're whole not, turkey and we're not talking like the little ones that like dude did you have a life did you live you know <laughs> like because it's so small yeah but we're talking about full-sized like american like feeds like 25 people turkeys uh we have them specially like baked far off site because the oven they don't really have those kind of ovens here and you know the i think you just said oven with a b maybe shit I'm turning japanese i think i'm turning japanese i really think so so uh let's never do that again <laughs> uh so so we have all these events every year and then for the last three years two and a half years ish you know that, that's just been on the shutdown and that's t- terrible because you know you know as much as i do like we love those events yeah you know and the kids we like to see the kids especially like christmas and summer camp summer camp is usually like five days long we take the kids out to the uh, japanese uh countryside it basically looks like hana no what is it kimi no nawa like all the scenes from Kimi no Nawa, like with the big fluffy clouds and the green and stuff like that. It basically is like that for five days. Plus mosquitoes. Don't forget about the mosquitoes. All the mosquitoes. You know, you guys don't get fucking bit. What's that about? Are you O negative blood type? Uh, I think I'm O. I don't know if it's plus or negative or whatever. I mean, I'm pretty sarcastic, so maybe it's negative. Yeah. I mean, I, I heard that O negative blood type is the most commonly bitten uh, blood type. We'll go to camp, guys. It'll be like fucking 40 of us. We'll all go out to the same fucking place and everybody's totally fine. And it's like, we did fireworks one, one time at camp. We'll never do that again. Cause that, we almost burned down the forest, but uh, we did fireworks this one time and like the kids are all playing with the fireworks and everything. And so it's, it's causing light at night, which attracts bugs. Yeah. Which this is another thing that we learned. Everybody's fucking fine. They go back to take their showers. Everybody's totally cool. I am like, I, it looks like I have chicken pox. I got bit so much. Only yeah. me. Yeah. I almost never get bitten Only by mosquitoes. Me. What the fuck is that about? the hell is that about it's bullshit i didn't sign up for this <laughs> anyway um and so you know this year we're gonna take the kids to camp uh we're doing a like a truncated version of it it's only be two days right and all the kids do the rapid test in the morning then the parents bring them i swear to god i think this is what's gonna happen okay so all the kids have the rapid test they've never most of them haven't done it which is not like america where the, you know the kids do it all the time um and so i swear to god i think every one of those kids are just gonna come with the unopened rapid test or partially open rapid test to the to the camp and be like can you please do this with my kid which is fine because yeah. they only take 15 minutes but i think that's gonna happen anyway so we're gonna go gonna have camp and the reason why i can't get covid and because and i'm so crucial to this plan is not because like i'm like the key teacher or counselor or anything like that i have to drive yeah nobody else in the school can drive that's it that's all it is guys they just need me to fucking drive them. And so in order to drive them for this two-day event, which was my idea, so it's, I guess it's my fault, uh, I couldn't do anything for almost two weeks. I stayed at home and did fucking nothing. The, I think the only person I met in those two weeks was Norm last time. And that was it. Well, I mean, it's everyday thing for us teachers. We're not doing anything well, ever. But, yeah, but you guys were allowed to as, as long as you're being smart about it. Like there was no rules against it, you know? Yeah, that's true. And but. then, I, and I kept, I keep telling you guys and I mean this, y'all going to get it. Just don't get it at the same time. Right. So I, I, the one, the one kind of rule thing that we've like kind of given you guys is like, don't all hang out together until y'all have gotten it once. And then, you know, then whatever. That's yeah. it. Yeah, but I'm really looking forward to camp. Like like you said, uh, this is our first event that we've had in a few years. And we used to have events every month, sometimes multiple times a month. And so it'll be really cool hanging out with the kids, going out. Like we're going to make some curry and rice. And- oh, yeah, that's another thing. Get this, guys. All of you at home who are listening to this show, get this. This is so bullshit. I was on the radio the other day. And like the other person who's on the radio with me, her name will remain unuttered. <laughs> I don't really know why I said that, but anyway, she, she was like, she's like, if you think about summer food, you think about, and I was like, barbecue, watermelon. She's like, curry and rice. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. I don't know. That's a weird thing that in Japan. What's up, Japanese people? Comment below. Why the fuck do you think that curry and rice, which are two very hot things? Yeah. They're not cool or like summery. They, they, to me, it's like stew in the winter kind of feeling when yeah. I look at it. 
They're like, let's eat that in the dead heat of summer. It's because for some reason when Japanese people go to camp, they don't do like a barbecue or something. Like they do sometimes like like a beach barbecue kind of thing. But when they go to a camp, especially uh, school camps, they rent places that have kitchens. kitchens. And the only thing that like kids know how to make is like curry and rice because it's basically like chop, 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 throw into the pot. Now we're done. Yeah, so I get it. I get why the kids would do that at camp. That makes yeah. sense to me. But if you're a grown ass adult and you have a wall with money in it, so you can buy whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. I wouldn't be like, oh, it's 45 degrees outside and 100% humidity. I'm going to eat some fucking piping hot curry and rice. Well, I mean, like, and we, it's not we even do spicy. Like barbecues, That's though. the other thing is it's not even spicy. Japanese curry is like sweet. Yeah. They put like apple in it. Apple and honey is it, like the most popular. Yeah. And I'm like, you want to eat hot soupy rice in the summer when it outside is like hot soupy weather. Yeah. Barbecue, you don't eat it when it's really that hot. I mean, the barbecue itself is hot. I get that. But like once you get the meat, it's like, you know, not piping, burn the top of your mouth hot. Yeah, that's true. And then you always finish it off with watermelon while drinking cold beers. Did you eat watermelon in America? Yeah, lots. I Maybe because I'm from Hawaii. Like, we always ate pineapple. I was trying to explain to Josh the other day. He's like, yeah, I'm Hawaiian. So I'm like, you're not fucking Hawaiian. I didn't say I'm Hawaiian. I'm like, you're not fucking Hawaiian. <laughs> I, I don't claim that You I'm are Hawaiian. a half white, half Japanese dude who was like... Your mom was present in Hawaii when you were born and raised there, but that doesn't make you Hawaiian. He's saying he explained that to me. I have never once actually thought you I'm You fucking Hapa Hawaii. Yeah, I am not a Hawaiian. Hapa Hawaii. I'm but from Hawaii. I, re- I was watching this YouTube. I, like, I, I don't know any Hawaiians personally. If there is any of you guys, if you're a Hawaiian out there and you're watching this, please comment with your, with your feelings on this. But I watched a, um, a YouTube video of a, a Hawaiian YouTuber, and he's like, he starts, he's, he's kind of, he was, I don't want to call it pidgin English, but he was like, like putting in a lot of Hawaiian slang that I was unfamiliar with. But the one word that I got was Holly. It's like, he's like, look at all these fucking Hollies. Like they're on their vacation. And like there was like this resort, like, you know, in the middle of their Island. And I was just like, there he's like videotaping them from far away. It's all these like super white people that probably just came from Wisconsin or something. And I was just like, and, I did, and then after that, I watched that. And then this Zuckerberg thing with his resort on whatever Island it is in Hawaii. Yeah. Where like his property is like literally like cut off other people from getting to their land. Yeah. You know, and like I started, I went down like a little bit of a rabbit hole, like watching about like Islander rights and things like that. I didn't know anything about that, but yeah, it's apparently like a hot button issue. Yeah, it's a very hot topic. Yeah. I didn't know about that. I mean, cause like most of us, when we go to Hawaii, we're like party and then we leave and we never think about it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I guess it's the same thing in Vegas. Like we don't, you don't think about how the whole West coast, not West coast, but West the Sierra Nevada area is running out of water. Like you don't care. You're just there for your vacation. Right. Go to a strip joint. Woo. Spend some money. Go to a buffet, you know, and then leave. You don't think about anything. Yeah. I mean, Hawaii has a lot of, well, at least my island, Maui, also has a lot of like uh, water problems too. That's how I found that video. Oh shit. What was that YouTuber called? It's like this. Uh, it's all, I think it's Australian or New Zealand. It's like truth like the true history of Hawaii or something like that. And it's got like this really attractive woman. And she's like, acts like she's presenting the news, but it's oh, incredibly yeah. sarcastic yeah. and funny. Oh, I'll, I'll look it up later, but that's yeah. so funny. And then they yeah, have like, you, the, send, you send that video to me and it's like very accurate. It's oh. so negative And yeah. so like sarcastic, but it's so, I guess accurate. Yeah. It's very accurate. It's like the true, the true history of Hawaii or something like that. But anyway, it's done so sarcastically. You can't stop a laugh. Right. But anyway, um, what, what the fuck are we talking about? Right, camp. So listen, so camp. We're going to do that, and then we're going to do curry, because whatever, Japanese people, whatever. And, uh, oh, dude, we didn't get a watermelon for camp. Well, I mean, I'm doing all the shopping tomorrow. I could get a watermelon, as long as you don't flush it down the toilet when you're done. Okay, story time. <laughs> I, I can say this now, because we haven't gotten in trouble for this. Okay, so, <laughs> it's been a few years. It's been a few years. <laughs> Probably okay. So about four years ago, maybe it was five, I don't remember. We go to camp at this place. I'm not going to name the place, but it's, it's basically like this concrete government government nuclear fallout shelter in the middle of the forest that they let people use for camp i mean it's supposed to be an international exchange slash camp building but it's so brutalist concrete yeah it felt like i was in jail no it really (laughs) does it feels like jail and anyway so we go there and we're i think we were there for like a week and like we're there with the kids and everything like the kids are in their kind of like bunkered rooms and like we the, the most of the teachers have our private rooms and stuff like that and then we did, uh, what's it called? Uh, si, si, what's it called? I forgot the name of it in Japanese. The, where you whack the watermelon. Yeah. So in Japan, they put a watermelon on the Suka. ground. 
They spin them around blindfolded. Wadi. Suika wadi is yeah, what it's called. Suika wadi. And they hit it with like a stick or a bat or something. Which is, to... guys, if you're Japanese out there, sorry. Bad you. Bad, bad, bad. Like a watermelon is a thing that you're supposed to treasure. Okay. It's, it's beautiful. You're supposed to put it on the kitchen counter and you're supposed to cut it pretty and make the little, you know, wedges and everything. And maybe if you're weird, you put a little salt on it when you eat it. I don't know. Uh, Yeah. I like it with salt. And that's, that's what you do. Okay. And you throw away the rinds, but otherwise it's a very clean operation when you're making the watermelon. Take it outside the kids, you know, they eat it, they get it all over themselves, whatever. Japanese people, why would you take such a sacred thing, the watermelon and put it on the fucking ground? And hit it with a fucking stick. Like a pinata. Like a pinata that you get dirt in. And then everyone's like, oh, it's so delicious while they're eating like sand, beach sand and shit. Crunchy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they put down like newspaper or, or like cardboard or something, but that doesn't make it better. Yeah. It's like, I, why would you do that? It's fun. Yeah, Whatever. I guess it's fun. Whatever. I mean, if you're drunk with a bunch of like young adults, it might be fun. But I just, anyway, so we could do watermelon. But yeah. then the thing is, is would we do it on day one or day two? Because if we do it on day one, we're going to attract all the ants. I mean, it would be a good, like, dessert or something. Or maybe we could do it during the outside time. Anyways, so we were at the government facility. So we're at the, all right, so so we had this watermelon, and then they did the, the sui, su, uh, suika wadi. wadi. And the kids, it was kind of late when we did it. It was our fault. And then it kind of got dark, and so we had to rush the kids back to the shower and stuff like that. So they didn't completely eat the watermelon. Yeah. And, like, they started attracting bugs. And I was like, well... I was like, how do I dispose of this? Because there was nobody at this facility. Like, they had vacated the premises. They're only there from, like, 9 to 5 because yeah. they're, they're government workers. And so I didn't know how to dispose of this. Right. And there was, like, no... Then they told us to keep our trash with us until we leave. And so, like, I didn't want ants invading our sleeping space. Right. So I was like... I was looking at it, right? And I was just like, well, if we make this small enough, we could just flush it, right? Because yeah. there was toilets. Now, this works in principle for half of the stuff. And then I got like, I kept like flushing it. And then eventually like the toilet just kind of backed up. And I was just like, oh, well, <laughs> what's happening here? And I didn't know this, but my room was like the, the sewer out, like line went from my room across all the other rooms and then out. So it got plugged somewhere along that line. So several rooms next to me, water drains and toilet drains stopped working. And I was like, what do we do? <laughs> And then it fixed itself. So it was totally fine. And I flushed the rest of the water because I didn't learn my lesson. And it was fine. It just took a little while. And we didn't get ants. But it was a little bit of a panic because there was like three hours a week. <laughs> I, I don't even know how you could get to that point where you're like, huh, how do I dispose of this? Dude, Flush it dude literally, like as you're walking around with a bag of watermelon, like the bugs are just like following you around. They're like, where are you going to put that down? Where are you going to put that? Like, and roaches, like giant flying roaches, Japanese samurai roaches okay we don't want that where we're sleeping yeah. after i flushed it I, I i wadded up the plastic bag that was in and put that in another plastic bag and threw that away in the burnable trash area the next day there was tons of ants in there that's yeah. just from the like juices that was left on the plastic imagine if there was like a whole watermelon yeah i did gross. the right thing guys comment below what do you think would you have flushed the watermelon <laughs> Anyway, so we're going to cap. I'm gonna drive, and we got a new teacher. She's yeah. never, she's never hung out with us before. She yeah. doesn't, she doesn't, <laughs> never hung she out doesn't know yet. She, she doesn't. She's never. Oh, well, she met the students for a little bit. She doesn't know. She doesn't know. Yeah. I'm just kidding. We're totally fine. Normal people. Are we normal? Anyway, so let's get to the news. Let's get to the news. So, uh, speaking of COVID, anyway, so I just, I, I, hopefully I don't get COVID. That's the point of all that. Japan moles. Let's do this a little bit out of order. Japan moles changing COVID-19 measures amid hospital strains. So basically, right now it's considered a highly infectious disease and they keep all the COVID people away from all the other people. And so it's kind of difficult on the on the hospitals because hospitals have to designate themselves as COVID hospitals mm -hmm. or not. So, you know, before, let's compare it to the flu. Before, if you had a fever, you didn't feel so great. You went to the doctor, they swapped the inside of your nose and they're like, oh, you have the flu. Go home and wait there for five days. Take this medicine, right? Okay. Now they're like, oh, you have COVID. We're going to put you in a you know, hospital or a hotel for 10 days. Or you, you know, what is it called? Kakuri, you stay at home for, for 10 days or something like that. So they treat it very differently from other viruses. And the, there's a lot of people out there who are saying, hey, let's just stop this. It says Japan is considered altering the COVID-19 measures, including a potential change in the collection of information numbers. It, uh, so right now, only official COVID centers can do PCR testing and and and. Dawson, you know, submit numbers to the to the news and the government, whatever. 
So they want that to be like any place, any any medical care facility. They want to be able to do that. Uh, the talks come as Japan logged 222,307 new infections Saturday, surpassing the 200,000 mark for the fourth straight day. Occupancy rates for designated hospital beds stood at 54.1% in Tokyo. I mean, that is really like the, the metric that I look at. Okay. I mean, it, how many people are in the hospital? How many people are dying? And right now it doesn't seem to be really that much different than any other... I mean, we did get monkeypox. That happened two weeks, a week and a half ago. Oh, we didn't get monkeypox. Well, no, we didn't go to a <laughs> sex orgy, so that's not that we didn't. Yeah. We, you just thinking about <laughs> doing that? You just thinking about no, doing that? No, I, I was gonna, I was thinking about saying like, well, I didn't go. But I well, I didn't go. <laughs> anyway, so like when that case, like I think we had two cases like a couple days. I haven't watched the news since then, but they're like, they, it's called Saruto in Japanese, which Saruto? is so, Saruto, and I was, just, they're like Saruto, kimashita. I'm like. <laughs> Anyway, and then so like all, all the people in a bar that I was in while we were watching the news, they're like, aren't you worried that this is going to be the next pandemic? I'm like, unless you're going to a gay orgy, you're probably okay. I, I don't really mean that. I get that most of the transmission is happening. Like the news is so funny in America. They're, they just they should just say this is currently spreading in the male gay community is what they should say because that's the facts. Right. But they keep wording it in such a fun way. They're like, it continues to spread amongst mainly amongst men who have sex with other men. <laughs> and you're just like oh, okay I see what you're doing <laughs> but no I mean like obviously it can affect anybody uh, it has spread to children now and things like that so don't don't. I'm, I'm not a medical expert <laughs> don't take my advice but I'm just saying it's, it's, I was having people in the bar I was like we'll be fine don't worry about it monkey pox will be fine but then again I also said that COVID would be totally fine in a week did say it's that. It's been a long week. It's been a long week. Did say that. So don't take what I say with a grain of salt. Okay. So let's do another uh, fun news story. There's a uh, video associated with this, vi several videos associated with this. Okay. So China fired ballistic missiles uh, into Japan's uh, exclusive ep economic zone, which they've uh, abbreviated EEZ. So I want to say Japan's easy. That's what I want to say, but it's not. It's an exclusive economic zone. Anyway, so what happened is there was a little woman named Nancy Pelosi. And if you didn't know this, if you ask a Republican, she is the reincarnation of the devil. And she wants to murder all of your unborn babies. Uh-oh. So, and if you ask a Democrat, they'll say Nancy Pelosi is still alive. Because she's like 300 years old. And then if you ask a Republican, they'll be like, well, you know, she's probably getting the blood of virgins injected into her. You know, they believe some really crazy shit. Like yeah. there are some YouTubers that go out and like to these rallies and stuff and they ask them questions. It's just like get them in logic loopholes. And they're just like, I forgot the name of that, that TikToker YouTuber who, go, who goes out and just, he's like a straight white looking guy. So he just, he kind of like blends in with them and he asks them all these questions. He's so funny. Anyway. So this, uh, devil woman named Nancy Pelosi went to, she decided to do an Asian tour as, as you do. Cause she's a, she's a dip, she's a, you know, she's a Congresswoman. So she, you know, goes and meets people. Right. And uh, China was totally cool with her going to Singapore and all these other places, but they're like, don't you do it. Don't you go to Taiwan because what are you doing? Are you looking up mm. who Nancy Pelosi is? No, my job tomorrow got canceled. I got to for Corona. Up. No, I don't know why. Cool. Well, you got the day off then. Yeah. Look at that bitching about not having a day off. Um, the f <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you know this, Josh, but. China has this problem called Taiwan. That actually might be the whole world's problem soon with nuclear warfare, but we'll see. Yeah. And so basically a long time ago when the Communist Party took over China, there were some people who were like, we're the real China. And then they fled to Taiwan and they were like, fuck you, China. We're real China. And then China's like, no, you're part of us. And then we had this long kind of awkward political problem for like, I don't know, 50 years or whatever it is. And so Japan, uh, America has the one China policy, which is like officially acknowledging that Taiwan is part of China while also not really supporting that idea. It's kind of pretty American to be really gray on this situation because, you know, we do so much business with China and we don't want to piss off Pooh Bear. Yeah. But anyway, so... So Nancy Pelosi is going to, she went to Taiwan and she is, you know, meeting with people in Taiwan, which is her fucking right, China. Fuck you. And uh, China was like, oh, I'm going to make a scene. And so they shot up a bunch of missiles and there's this great map of the, so they, they did military training exercises around uh, the Taiwan area. Just kind of flexing. 
kind of flexing, but it was, it was a weird flex. You know what I mean? You know, like it was like, you know, when people do a humble brag and you just kind of walk away from it because it's kind of awkward. Yeah. It was like that, but more missile-y. Anyway, so they fired off some missiles that like landed kind of near Okinawa and stuff like that. And there's this great uh, 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 picture, this image that I will send to you and you can put it in the show. And it's basically the image of what, where they had the, these drills around Taiwan. So if you look at this photo, you see like the island of Taiwan and it shows like the Chinese, like like the, the, the live fire drills. And it's just basically like surrounding the island. It's just like all around the island of Taiwan. Mm. And you're just like, cool, humble brag guys. And anyway, so like America was just like ignoring them. They're like, whatever, China. And then Nancy Pelosi, remember the devil woman, she went and spread Satanism in Taiwan is what she did. I don't actually know why she went there. Like, she, I think part of it was just like she wanted to, you know, like because of the Russia situation, you know, them inv- inv- invading Ukraine and stuff like that. I think that there was like this kind of maybe push for like the current government in the United States to show like strength and ties with Taiwan over because like, you know, China is obviously watching what's happening in Ukraine. And they're right. thinking to themselves, like, can we do this in Taiwan? Because, you know, they really want to take over Taiwan because, you know, if you guys don't know this, like, you know, they, they have like the the um, the the Taiwanese TSMC, which is like the Taiwanese chip maker that makes all the the big video cards, video cards and, and like CPUs and stuff like that. And that, that technology, um, if that got in the hands of the Chinese, would be really a defense problem. Mm. And so... That alone is enough reason to to protect the Taiwanese. But the Taiwanese government is kind of like a flourishing democracy of smart people and you know good economic policies in the middle of China. And so it's it's a great it's a great example of a good country. Um, you know, it's, they don't have the crazy tyranny like they do in China and stuff like that. By the way, I think I'm pretty banned in China. I think if they ever Google my name and all the things that I've said on the show about China, they'll be like, "Nope, you can't land here." Like I'm pretty sure I'm banned there, which is fine. That's I don't okay. Want, I don't really want to go there. I'll just go to Taiwan instead. Yeah. Ah. But anyway, so uh, this is so so Japan said uh, the foreign minister Yoshimasa Hayashi demanded that China immediately stop the live fire drill near Taiwan. This is a grave issue that concerns our country's national security for the safety of the people. Defense Minister Nobu Okishi said at a hastily called news conference calling China's move extremely coercive. Mm. So that's some strong language. I don't know. Who do you think would win? The whole world or China? I think that's kind of one of those situations where we all lose. Yeah, I was going to say, there's really no win in that scenario. Like, Well, I don't know. I, I, how many nukes do you think we could survive? <laughs> I mean, we could probably survive a couple, but... Remember that story that we had about New York, about the lady saying, yeah. you got this. <laughs> yeah, thanks, lady. The lady, the, the nuke. The, if you guys didn't watch the show or listen to the show, there was, like, there was this PSA in New York about like what to do if there's a nuclear attack in New York. Yeah. And the last thing that this poor actress lady who I don't think she knew what she was signing up for when she signed up for this, the very last thing that she says in the, in the, in this, like, I don't know, one minute long PSA explaining what to do in a nuclear uh, attack. It's just like, you got this. It's like, okay. Uh, in a related story, China said Thursday it has decided not to hold foreign ministries m- meeting with Japan on the fringes of the Asian, I think is how you say this, S A S E A N related gathering uh, in Penn. Phan Pen in Cambodia, uh, describing it as a fallout from the U.S. House of Representatives uh, devil worshipping D- Nancy Pelosi. I actually don't think that about her. I think she's the yeah, normal old I was, lady. I was going to say, like, you keep saying that. I think people it's are going to... because the Republicans <laughs> think that. Like, have you ever seen, like, their caricatures of her on their stupid signs that always have spelling errors in them? No, I haven't. I mean, if you're a Republican and you like our show, I love you. I just think that some of your fringy people are weird. And so, mm-hmm. like... There are weird people on both sides. Yeah, of it, but, but Republican weird... Like, weird people on the left, okay? They're, like, pink hair and crying about words, right? They're mostly harmless. <laughs> you're just like, ah, uh, you weren't hugged enough as a child or something like that, right? The the fringy people on the right are armed. Yeah, that's true. Just like the, <laughs> that's... Oh, yeah. Scary. You know what I mean? That's like... The, <laughs> It's like a huge difference. Pink hair lesbian lady talking about her, you know, vagina po- poetry or, or what are they called? What's the what is it called? The vagina, um, uh, what is it called? Monologues. 
You never, you never. I have no idea what you're talking about. Google it, guys. That's pretty harmless in my book. I'm just like, ah, oh, whatever. Just delete those memories from my brain. But like, if you're like the dude who thinks that you're gonna like single handedly, I don't know. Like, did you see the video of the dude who went to that pizza restaurant thinking that there was like a child trafficking oh, ring the, in the, the basement? Papa John's one. It was not a Papa John's, but basically it was a pizza uh, place. And he's like, show me the kids. Show me the basement. They're like, we don't have a basement. And he's like, no. Show me the kids. And he's like, and he's like live streaming this. And like all the like very confused staff are like, sir, we don't have a basement. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, let's just let's actually let's turn this narrative around. Uh, God fearing straight up Christian Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. Uh, uh, Taiwanese visit. So that really pissed off China as we were talking about. And so China decided to not meet with Japan, which is, you know, it's either completely going to be hilarious in 20 years when we think about back about these times or like. I don't think it's going to be. Hilarious. You know, have you ever seen have you ever seen Rick and Morty? Yes, I have. And they had like, they went to like the ap- apocalyptic world and they're like in the before, before times or whatever. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, you think that's going to happen to us? I really Josh, hope in the not. before, before times, we used to have this thing called the internet and memes. Do you remember that? And electricity and food. I hope not. <laughs> Let's get to something a little less depressing. All right. We have the JSA targets overseas audience with English YouTube channel. So the JSA, the Japan Sumo Association, on Tuesday announced the launch of an official English language YouTube channel aimed at drawing a wider international audience to the sport. The Sumo Primetime channel will feature videos about the ancient Japanese sports history and culture, as well as tournament highlights. So apparently there were a number of unofficial sumo channels on youtube that have capitalized on overseas interest in the sport with some attracting tens of thousands of subscribers which to me doesn't sound like a lot i don't know if it's worth like the jsa making an official youtube channel for tens of thousands of subscribers well okay so so sumo right is kind of market capped right now in japan like if you are into sumo you're already into it yeah Right. And a de- declining population, they're not going to increase their fan base. Right. And uh, have you ever seen a live sumo event? No, I haven't. I got as far as the front door. Okay. And then I forgot that I didn't buy a ticket and they were, didn't have any tickets. And so I was just like, well, you guys enjoy sumo. I'm going to go get drunk in a bar. And that's what happened. And okay. then they came afterwards and we got drunk. But the one, the one thing, if you guys have never seen sumo before, I, I watch it on TV all the time because one of the eateries that I go to, they have like... I think it's because all the, the staff are really old that they have an 85 inch television on the wall and they always play sumo on it. And the dude who does the cash register, I think he's like 85. He's like, <laughs> it's like an inch for every year. There was a live. See, he's sitting there like literally inches away from his 85 inch screen, just watching sumo. And I, that's probably because he can't really see. Right. So anyway, that's, that's where I watch sumo. And I, I can tell you most of the rules, but I'm not like an aficionado or anything. Right. Don't, but don't fall down. But yeah, don't fall down. Don't, don't, don't go out of the circle. Out. But the one thing that I really want to see in person is that uh, when there is an upset call, whenever like the referee, you can't really call him a referee because he's in like a crazy kimono, but like the the guy, the referee guy. Yeah. When there's a, an upset call, they always take the zabuton, the cushions that the audience members are sitting on, and they throw it at the rink. Which, if you know anything about Japan, one outwardly expressing rude behavior like that is incredibly uncommon. It's very rare. Right. And two, to see like raining Zabuton coming into this, like the, the sacred rink where they do the sumo stuff. I want to be there just once. Like what kind of calls can you really make? Like, so, Oh, he didn't fall on his ass or. No. So for example, okay. There'll be like two guys and they'll, they'll go at each other and they'll both hit their side and fall out of the uh, rink at the same time. Right. And they'll go to, the thing is, is that they'll call it without looking at the replay. Okay. They, they, the guy generally calls it based upon because sumo is a, is a religion. Right. It really is. Cause they're just, they're the Japanese people. So they have to make everything to the nth degree, right? They, they, Jap, they Japanese it. Right. So sumo is like, it's religious. It really is. And, and I hope none of these people who do that organization see this cause they will totally kill me cause they're super serious about this. But the, you think that the start when they the two guys sit there on the, the side the opposite sides of the rink it's, i don't even want to call it a rink the circle it's called a circle it's probably offensive to call it a rink and then they both put their hands down like mm-hmm. this like one one fist the other fist and when they're all four fists from the two guys are on the on the ground is when they start and then right. they lunge at each other and then they you know whoever gets pushed out of the circle or falls down first loses and the other guy wins that's actually not when that 
is when that starts. It's actually not the, 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 the point in which the, the wrestling match starts. The wrestling match starts when the two of them and God have formed some sort of like understanding that it is going to begin. So it's spiritual. So it's not actually, I mean, like physically they're putting their hands down, but the right. actual explanation is that, that their spirits are aligned or some, some sort of spiritual ether thing. I don't know, spiritual Wi-Fi, Bluetooth connection happens, and then they go at it. God said, my drink's ready. Okay, you can start now. Go, and right. Then, okay. Right. So that's what happens, okay? And so when they call it, I don't know, they might, they might reference like slow motion now replays. I'm not sure. But when they called it before, it's always the guy just, that's god's will or like the spiritual will or whatever it's like a very spiritual thing mm. and so sometimes people in the audience get pissed off because a lot of those guys who if you're so hardcore that you're going to a wrestling match you're probably betting on it right right and so then there's an upset call the guys throw their zabu to the, the to the stage and it's just like hilarious now there's other things that I want to see in sumo. Like one, uh, there used to be this foreign guy and I forgot what this is called. If one of you guys in the audience know what this is, uh, comment it. But there's this uh, type of wrestling style where you simply just run at the dude and kind of like judo them to the side and throw them down as fast as possible. It's not like the two of them cla- like like clashing together like Godzilla and, and King Kong, like fighting it out for, for strength or whatever. It's like actually using like a judo move to just like throw them to the side, using the weight against them. Okay. And it's considered very disrespectful because it's like tripping them. Basically. It's like, it's like using a gimmick is what it is. Right. And there used to be this white guy who like used to do this all the time. And he was like disgraced at some point and stopped doing it. Well, he, he like, I saw a video of him. He would just jump out of the way. Mm. Stuff like that. Yeah. And there's a word for that. I forgot. There's a Japanese way of describing that kind of technique and it's, it's completely frowned upon. But anyway, and that's part of it is like it's the idea that it's a spiritual battle between these two forces. And so anything that disrupts that is, is obviously they, they want to cut that out. That's why women aren't allowed in the sport. It's, it's very spiritual. It's very like religious based. Right. Um, and then also, if you guys are really interested in sumo, check out uh, uh, Freakonomics. Uh, it's on their podcast as well as in one of their books. Uh, but it talks about how uh, one of the, the economist, I forgot his name, the economist, he just, he just wondered one day, he's like, if I did a statistical like, like calculation, like a background calculation on all the sumo matches from like the last 10 years, could I prove that they're cheating? And he did. And the way that he did that is like, it, it's, it gets really technical, but basically at some point, if you win so many matches uh, as you're moving up the ladder, you can afford to lose a couple and it doesn't hurt you in any way. Mm. So when you're facing against like your Kohai, for example, uh, you can help him by purposely, losing. purposely losing, losing the match. I see. And, uh, and uh, I wish I could remember the, the Freakonomics guy's name, but he proved uh, that, uh, that they did that. And it was like a huge upset. And I actually think, I think one of the sumo guys got taken out by the Yakuza or something like that over this. Oh, what? Yeah. It was, a uh, um, it was a big thing that like happened. Uh, and, uh, I'm trying to like, what's his name? I do like this dude, uh, Stephen Levitt and, uh, Stephen, Stephen J Dubner. I think it was, uh, Dubner who did the, who did the, um, the study anyway so yeah they proved that they were cheating and i don't know i think they've fixed that now but it was a huge thing and it was just some pencil neck american guy going hmm if i ran the numbers on this i think i might find some cheating and he found some cheating <laughs> and it like they hit some guys and like you know it was crazy Ooh. yeah it's a it's all it's one of their podcast episodes as well they go into it in d- details so if you check that out anyway it was supposed to be light news right well anyways like they're starting <laughs> an english youtube channel i mean if it gets popular in other countries, that's cool. But I feel like it's one of those things that like you have to be like really into it or else you're not going to get well, into it. Well, I think that they're trying to figure out they're, they're, I think that they're trying to push to a new fresh audience. Right. So they're thinking that more people watch it. It's more accessible because it's in English. They'll understand the calls, what they're saying, and then they'll get interested. I mean, I didn't know anything about sumo really until I read that Stephen Dubner uh, and Levitt uh, uh, piece in their book. And then I got a little bit into it watching it on TV and stuff like that. Mm. And I also met, I think I've mentioned this previously on the show, but I came across a couple uh, uh, Yoko Zuna and like a, another guy, these two sumo wrestler guys who came here and they're walking down the street with their, uh, with their entourage of women. Right. And they were just, I didn't realize how big they are very big. And I don't mean fat. I mean tall. They're yeah, like they're six tall. foot seven and 190 kilograms. 
Yeah. And they're just like a moving wall of energy, kinetic energy, and they're just huge. So, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't, if you're like, go in the rink with that guy, I'm like, nope, nope, just gonna, I'll deal with that other dude, just like step aside. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, people, some people like to make fun of sumo because they don't understand it, but when you get into it, it is actually pretty, pretty interesting. All right, let's go to something fun. Let's go to the story about my man, Sho Taguchi. For life. Uh, if you guys don't remember about this guy, he uh, the this 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 little town in Yamaguchi Prefecture fucked up, and they deposited the entire town's worth of COVID relief funds into this one guy's bank account, and he did what, which is like like three hundred fifty thousand dollars, and he did what any stand up citizen would do, and he went to bet it all in a casino. Right. I mean, if you can make more money, then you can give some of it back and keep the remainder. Yeah. That's exactly how casinos work. That's how invents, investments work. Right? right. I I did not know that you could invest in Las Vegas casinos. Yeah. But this is actually a Japanese casino anyway. Um, and so he lost it all. And then, you know, obviously the police found out and then they, they, the city got their most of their money back because the, the gambling site that he lost it on, um, you know, they aren't, it's a law in Japan that you can't receive, uh, stolen funds. Mm. So they refunded it back to the city. So, you know, not no harm, no foul kind of, but the guy still went to jail. He's out on bail and, uh, he got out on bail and he was like walking through the news cameras and like, he did a little thing. He talked a little bit and then like, and then his lawyer said that he's like immensely sorry and he's going to like, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Now that all is totally normal. But the problem is, is after he walks past all the news cameras, he walks and gets into a car where there's another person with a camera. And that person is none other than the famous YouTuber Hikaru. So this Hikaru guy contacts him while he's in jail. He's like, hey, you want a job working for me? Let's do some YouTube shit. You sound like a fun guy. So this dude like helped him get bailed out of jail. And then the second he got in, in, into the, into the um, uh, car, he's like, you know, he kind of there with the camera. He's like, hey, what's up, bro? And so they made him into a YouTuber. So now he's a YouTuber. That's so weird. So it's, yeah. It's, it's so like such a modern thing to happen. So perhaps he got his own background is why he took a liking to the to uh, Taguchi and saw him as a generally good person who just made some bad choices earlier in his life. In addition to bailing him out of jail, Hikaru also set him up with an, with employment at one of his rela- related businesses, which allows him to work remotely since he's not allowed to leave Yamaguchi. Did it say how much he had to pay for bail? Yeah, it doesn't say that. But I mean, I'm sure it wasn't free. It was probably. I mean, he's he's fucking super. Okay, so here we go. Uh, and as of this writing, only four days after he opened his account, this is the my my boy Taguchi. Uh, he gar- garnered over ninety thousand followers. Wow! In four days, Small Talk has what two thousand followers on. If you include the audio podcast, like what five or six thousand followers? I think we have three thousand on YouTube, right? No, we only have two. I think. Oh, whatever. We should probably know how many. Yeah. I mean, I think in total, I think it's like 5,000. And so, I mean, we, we average more listens on the audio version of this than we do on yeah, the YouTube oh, version. We have less than 2,000. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. I don't know what I was looking at. So we, we got about 5,000 followers across the two Between platforms. The, yeah, the and then, yeah. And then, you know, I don't know, average, like maybe 20% of those people listen to every episode. And so 90,000 in four days. It's pretty nice. So uh, you have only fun stories now, right? I have a lot of fun stories left. Okay, we'll save those for the end. Uh, so let's do the Sad Saga of Japan's foreign trainee program. So if you guys uh, are unaware, in 2017, there was this law passed to let um, low-skilled job seekers from other countries come to Japan and kind of be like foreign trainees working in things like, you know, technical factories and stuff like that. Um, but there's two problems with this program. One... A lot of the jobs that these people are getting hired for are autom- are like semi-automated jobs. So for an example, uh, the, in the story that they give the example of a semi-automated cash register. Now you've seen these before. You go to 7-Eleven or Family Mart or Lawson or something like that. And there's somebody at the counter who right. punches everything into the register. But then there's like this complicated machine facing you with like a touch screen and you put in your own money and get your own change out of it. Right. You can select like your method of payment right and, and it's all it's all like the dude is just standing there on the other side of the counter not doing any of that shit for you right it's like why are you here i mean they're there to scan the items i guess but if they can find a way to automate that part 
of it, then really you don't need anybody. I mean, it's like one foot in, one foot out of the Amazon stores, you know, where they yeah. just pay. Oh my God, I saw the funniest skit. I think it was Saturday Night Live. And like, it was like making fun of the Amazon store. And it's like, it's doing a commercial exactly like Amazon would. And it's got like all these incredibly white people going like, oh my God, I just, I just pick up anything and just leave. And it's like, yeah, it's great. And it's like showing all these people, white people doing that. And then it shows like this really sour face, like black dude. And he's like, uh-uh. I had fallen for that. <laughs> and like, there's just like the contrast between the two of them. And then they had like this couple of like this, bl- this black lady and like this white dude is like a couple. And the, the, the woman's like, you do it. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Anyway. So it, we're like one foot away from like one foot in one foot out of like this automation, you know, like where we don't even need people in the stores. And so this Japanese law has allowed a lot of these, these businesses to hire these immigrants who just stand behind the, the cash register and, wait for the people to do their own checkout right so they basically do nothing but just mindlessly stare off into the void for like however many hours they work but a lot of the other kind of jobs that they uh have are a lot of like manual labor jobs and like farming wait wait wait. so so that's one of the jobs that they have other jobs that they have are like uh farming which is really important we've talked about this on the show before like japan absolutely needs a, a a uh, not just a top level immigration where people with like, you know, college degrees and shit like that come into the country, which is important. Don't get me wrong. Right. But we also need a, 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 a low skill immigration uh, pathway for people to work on the farms and to work in factories and stuff like that. Um, especially since a lot of those people are coming from Southeast Asia and they're sending that money home to their families. It's good for the world economy. It, you know, it, it, and it also provides an opportunity for those people to gain skills, build themselves a life here and then bring their families here, you know, things like that. There's a lot of opportunity here, right? Right. But so one problem is that a lot of the, not a lot, but a, a, a non insignificant number of workers are um, working these like basically half automated jobs, one mm-hmm. and two, uh, that uh, this law in 2017 isn't going as planned because a public report from the Immigration Services Agency said that as many as 9052 foreign trainees went missing in 2018 alone. So they come here. Yeah. It's because it's, it's, I think it's like three or five years or something like that. Yeah. Three years. Okay. And so they come here and it's like, they work for three years. And then at that point, they like the companies can either like, if they like grow up, if they go up the food chain, they can give them a provide them with a real visa. I shouldn't say a real visa. That's kind of like gatekeeping like a, or whatever. A longer like a, term a longer term visa. visa. And, and then, you know, that then they have their opportunities to bring their families over and stuff like that. Or it's like, all right, end of your three years, you need to go back home. Right. And I mean, if that's the case, that's the case. That's just what it is. But in that case, like I said, in 2018, almost 10,000 people were just like, you know, like Homer Simpson, or was it Homer Simpson? Like fading, yeah, into, fading the bush. into the bushes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like <clears throat> uh, this entire conversation kind of happened when uh, Trump was in office and they were talking about building the wall and all that. But most illegal immigration doesn't come from like border hopping. It comes from riding on an airplane, coming over with a, don't, like a travel visa. Don't, so don't, like, don't put out facts. They don't need facts. They don't like facts. And then just overstaying your welcome being fading into the bush. I mean, that does happen a lot here. Um, actually, I, I've known friends who have come here because they want to because they're working remotely. Right. So they yeah. just come here on a three month like uh, traveler's visa, which, by the way, will start happening probably next month or something like that in Japan. They'll come in for the three month thing and then go to Hong Kong or Taiwan for a day or two and mm-hmm. then come back for three months. Just keep doing that over and over again. Right. Um, but yeah, it's I don't know. I have like a really like uh, mixed and and constantly changing opinion on visas on the one hand i think that uncontrolled immigration is terrible right right you don't want to be in the situation that germany is finding itself in now where they took in all of these immigrants and refugees that aren't necessarily compatible with the german culture culture and lifestyle right and so and this is happening in sweden and other nordic countries as well and they're trying to figure that out. That's a tough situation, right? And that's right. going to be one of the things that, you know, kids learn about in, in future history class. Um, so you don't want unfeathered, uh, unfettered, unrestricted immigration. But at the same time, I kind of hate visas because I want to be able to pluck a skilled worker right out of America and just put them right into Japan. I, yeah, I do feel like Japan is on the, a little bit the too strict side of it where it's really hard for people to actually come into Japan and get visas, especially now. Yeah. I mean, it depends on what you're comparing it to. I know a lot of Japanese people that are trying to get visas in America. I actually know a guy who just like straight up 
like jumped like did this he just like faded into the bush he's like living illegally in america right now he's a japanese guy he's one of my good friends he's actually really interesting but like immigration in america is a fucking mess yeah you ask anybody who ever tries to immigrate there if you're not like a phd or a really skilled labor or like a worker you're it's so dumb so let's not compare it to the bottom of the barrel but like if you compare it to like europe for example the european union is so easy and free to move around within the the, the eu right um you know there's got to be some economic benefit to that i imagine yeah so uh, let's do a fun story for me and then we'll do yours to wrap up the show. Uh, let's say, so Jal makes, Jal system makes air travel easier and lets you keep laptops, liquids in bag for security checks. So if you guys have not traveled in uh, a decade or two, you'll know that when you go through the gate or to get into the gate, a security check, you've got to remove your laptop, your switch, your cell phone, your keys, any, elect any other electronics out of your luggage and put it into a separate bin by itself so it can be checked. Right. Right. That sucks, man. I hate that because like not only does it, it's like, I don't really like taking out all my electronics and putting it into a bin that like I don't stay with because it sometimes it goes away from you for a little while. Right. And I don't like that it's a security problem. And also I just would prefer them like because 20 years ago before 9-11, you, you wouldn't know this because you're like, you were born like five days ago, but right. before 9-11, you could actually just walk into the gate yeah i mean i don't remember it but i like I no like you would before. literally you could walk straight up to the gate with your family and like see them off at the gate actually i do remember that the first time i came to japan by myself like without my uh father accompanying me on the airplane i was still very very young i think like five years old or six years old or something like that so i remember like first time i came back to uh hawaii my mom met me at the gate uh, and she was like hey let's go um, and like we just walked out and it's really easy to go in and out one of my favorite memories of going to hawaii you weren't born i swear to god you weren't born at this time okay it was like <laughs> 90 i don't know three when were you born 92 okay so you're one years old yeah uh so I got off the plane in Oahu and uh, my airline, I think it was Hawaiian Airlines, whatever island it was, they had this policy at that point that they laid you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Come on, I want to lay you. They laid you when you got into the airport outside of the gate. You walk through the gate and they're like, welcome to Hawaii. And they give you a, 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 a lay of fresh flowers. Right. That was like my first experience in Hawaii. Yeah, I, I think they should bring that back. It's really nice. It's money, dude. But I was just like, I got there and was just like, man, I could do well here. And every single time, just that one introduction to Hawaii. Every time I went to, I go to Hawaii even these days, I, I remember that when I get into the Honolulu airport, which by the way, was made in like the 1960s, is ugly as shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like big and concrete. It looks like it's made in Japan, basically. Yeah. It's not a very pretty airport, but whatever. No one goes there for the airport. But anyway. But yeah, so yeah. what are we talking about? Right, so Jal has made a system where you can just keep everything in your luggage, just throw it in, and then you just walk through security, and then, you know, you don't have to take anything out, which is cool. So how does that work? Like, well, I don't know. It just says there's, there's now a way around the inconvenience thanks to Jal. The airline has developed a new X-ray CT inspection system, and it calls it, calls it Jal Smart Security. I feel like any electronic or system that has the word smart in it is inevitably dumb. Right. Anyway, which lets you keep your laptop inside inside your carry on during inspection, which also and which also utilizes uh, a few other clever ideas to get you into your boarding gate as smoothly and as stress free as possible. So you don't have to take your liquids out, but they still have the same restrictions on like the amount that you can bring in. Um, I don't know. I mean, because like the liquid thing is international travel. Right. Uh, inside the country, you could bring oh, whatever yeah, liquids you want. But yeah. you do have to take it out. You have to show it to them. They have to put it on the little scanner thing to to make sure it's not, I don't know, explosive. Right. It's like some shoot a beam through it and lights up green. And they're like, this is cool. Right. Magic. They put a lighter up to it to see if it catches flame. See, we all bitch about security, but until you're on a hijacked plane, right? No, they, I like, honestly, I don't mind going through security and having all of those things. Like, whenever I go through the, 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 the metal detector, because I'm always the only white guy in line. It's always Japanese people and then me. I always like go through the, the metal detector with my hands up like a cactus, just like to make it fun. And everybody just looks at me like, has he done this before? I thought you were going to say like you get randomly selected every time. <laughs> uh, when I was in Incheon and I was coming back to Japan from Vegas, uh, I went to the ticket counter and the dude was American Korean. And so he's like, hey, what's up, bro? I was like, man, you speak English well. He's like, well, I was, I was raised in Jersey. I was like, cool, bro. Anyway, he's doing the whole check-in process and whatever. And he goes, oh, man, I have to, I shouldn't tell you this, but 
you know, American broism, whatever. He's like, you see this little letter at the end of your number? He, I'm like, yeah. He's like, that means that they're going to randomly inspect you. And I'm like, okay. He's like, sorry, bro. I didn't do it. It's just there. It happens. It's, it's RNG, random number generator. I was like, okay, cool. I got all the way to the gate. I'm like, this fucking, this guy's lying. Like I didn't get randomly checked at all. And then we get into the gate, into the sky bridge. And then they pull me out of the sky bridge to check me and my carry on. Like in this special room from the sky bridge. Did they put a, a glove on? I don't really remember. It was like five o'clock in the morning, but oh. I was just like, oh, that dude was telling the truth. Sorry, Jersey. Didn't mean to curse you out in my head. But anyway, uh, but no, if, if Jal can make the, the, the security situation easier, I, I'm all for it. Yeah. Especially in the <clears throat> America. Oh my God. They have like the 360 scanner, scanner mm, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah. things are neat, but I was like watching, you're not supposed to do this, but I was like watching the dude in his screen and like, you know how they're not supposed to be able to see your genitalia? Yeah, right. I was like, dude, I can, that's like obvious. Like, like it's, I mean, it's superhero mode, which is like, you know, smooth over, but I'm right. just like, it's like, you guys are pervs. <laughs> I don't think they're like watching that and going, oh yeah, I love my job. I hope <laughs> not. Anyway, let's get to your fun stories. All right. Feature hair donations booming in Japan, but know how still lacking. Do you know anybody who's ever given hair? Um, uh, yes, I do. I think one of our students actually gave hair, like uh, one of the kids students. One of the kids students. Yeah. Like they grew out their hair basically down to their waist and then they cut it. And I think they said that they donated it. The, the, the person that I just want to say should have married, just, just, just describe her like that. She does that. One of my, one of my good friends does that um, repeatedly. It's like a cycle for her. She grows her hair out really, really long. looks like a hula dancer. By the way, I think that's really hot. And I have no idea why. It's so weird, right? Why do I need a girl to have hair down to her butt? There's no reason for that, right? But I really do think that's hot. Well, I mean, the few times that we've had uh, female stuff that cut their hair really short, you were like, uh-uh. Oh, dude, come on. Uh-uh. It's not because it's short. It's because they didn't look good. Yeah. Okay. And then and I was just like, I, guys, I'm not a dick, but I don't lie. I never, ever, ever lie. Because one, you know when I'm lying. It's so fucking obvious. And two, I don't remember when I lie. So if I lie, I will just forget like minutes later. And then you ask him a second time and it's going to be a different story. Right. So I just like, I gave up on lying like when I was a teenager. So I just don't lie anymore. So my, my life is a lot easier. The only thing I will do is I'll be quiet. If I don't want to say something, uh, yeah, I've noticed that. Instead of lying, I'll just stop talking, and then it's really apparent that something's wrong because I talk all the time. Yeah. And so yeah. when I stop talking, everybody's like, "What's like, wrong with Mitch?" All, all you listeners, you probably watch the show and you think like, "Wow, Mitch really knows how to turn on the radio mode." Like, no, this is just Mitch all, all the, time. the time. It gets worse when I drink too. Yes. <laughs> um. Right. So what the hell are we talking about? Right. So I don't lie. Hair donations. No, no, no. Staff with bad haircuts. So I don't lie. Okay. And in our our company, our Japanese company in Japan, we have the rule that every Japanese person notices when they sign up, you can have any hair color as long as the human hair color. Yeah. In, jo- in Japanese companies, it's like black, straight, no makeup, no glasses or whatever. You know, it's like crazy rules. And we're like, if you're wearing clothes, cool. Yeah. Like our vice president, uh, Kyoka, comes to school, like school all the time with like Jurassic Park t-shirts and mm-hmm. sequins and stuff. But anyway, so hair for hair, you just need human colored hair. I mean, look, this is obviously my natural blonde hair color. Yeah. <laughs> so like, you know, anything is fine. So what the Japanese, especially the girls do is the very first thing that they do is because they've never been able to do this before working for other companies. They chop off their hair and they dye it blonde, bleach it blonde. And the, the, the several times that this has happened, I've come in the front door because, you know, they, they work at the front desk and I go, what did you do? <laughs> And they're like, you don't like it? I'm like, no. And the, the best one was the, the last one to do this, uh, Kana. I walk in and I was like, what did you do? And she just like flips it to the side and she says, call me Kathy. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? The, the funny thing is like, she said that as a joke to you. And then you, you just kept calling her Kathy. And then everyone else in, in the school. Well, dude, she like, literally, I, I go home on a Friday. Yeah. And she's like a Japanese girl from Saga. I come back on a Monday. She looks like Hillary Clinton. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, what did you do? And she's like, call me Kathy. So I was like, put on a pantsuit. Let's do this. <laughs> I love her though. She's great. That yeah. is like one of my favorite staff I've ever had. Yeah. Especially because she used to work at Disney World in Florida. 
And she has all these stories. Like, remember, she was telling me this story about how she went to a club and was puking, like, some neon-colored drink all over herself. No, she... She ordered uh, like some kind of drink where she added extra shots of Everclear in it. Yeah, it was like a slushy or something. Yeah, and she like drank it, started dancing, woke up in the bathroom with vomit in her pants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it was. It was on her pants. <laughs> And she's just telling you this story, like, like so matter of factly, like what she had for breakfast that day. Yeah, it was, it, yeah, it, it was no big deal to her. She's like, yeah. And then I just woke up and then I looked down and there was vomit in my pants and then I cleaned it up, cleaned myself up, went back out, finished, started dancing, started dancing, finished my drink, woke up in a wheelchair on my way home. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> her, her, her stories of Florida, they just... I love it. Well, they're very Florida. Like one day I was just sitting there in the lobby and I was talking about a mullet. I was just like, oh, cause I think I was describing one of the students. And I was like, dude, his haircut's got like, he's like a mullet. And she just goes, oh yeah. She's like business in the front party in the back. And I'm just looking at this Japanese girl. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, she's I, was like, great. I was like, yeah, I guess you did live in Florida for two years. <laughs> she's the weird one. Anyways, Actually, getting to the story. Yeah. So Japan is seeing a rise in programs to donate hair to make uh, medical wigs for children suffering from cancer and other diseases, but lack of knowledge among donors and a shortage of uh, manufacturers is holding back progress. So basically, they have a lot of rules for yeah. like how the hair needs to be, um, like not just the 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 length of it, but there also ne- uh, needs to be thirty one inches. It can't be overly damaged mm. and there are increasing cases of uh, hair either being too short or too fragile. Uh, So a lot of the wigs or the hair that's donated for the wigs is being rejected, Yeah, which is a shame. But I mean, it's good that it's... They're they're starting. They'll get used to it, Yeah, they're going to get there. And uh, that's really good. A few shows ago, we were talking about uh, Chris Rock's uh, uh, special on, on, on like the black American hair like experience right and it's called good hair if you've never seen it watch it it's amazing it it taught me so many things you know it's weird growing up in america you know as a visually white male i mean i'm part asian but like you look at me you wouldn't know that right like my experience as an american in america versus someone who looks different from me you don't really realize that until you watch a documentary like that Mm. and then you watch it and you're like damn like that's a whole different section of america that i never experienced and right. you realize that's when you start to learn stuff like that. So anyway, we, we mentioned that documentary, I don't know, three or four weeks ago. Our hair lady, Chaye, listens to the show and she's like, get me that documentary. I want to watch it. And so I was like, oh, that's cool. So she wants to watch it. So I'm going to try to find a, a Japanese version of it for her. Mm. But yeah, I mean, hair is a thing. Yeah, I mean, Jap- like you've had this problem kind of in Japan too. Uh, no, I different- have, no, I have the exact opposite problem. Uh, American... Uh, American stylists can't cut my hair because I have like Japanese textured hair. It's like it's that's why it only goes up. It goes straight up and spikes. That's all I can do. It's Asian look. It's Asian in thickness and in and in coarseness, but it's brown in color. Yeah. So you have the brown color, but it's like a cat. Yeah. I it's have white like people hair. hair. White people hair. But like when you get your hair uh, bleach, though, yeah. you have to do it for a shorter amount of time. Then that's because of the color, right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I don't know, like hair is one of those things where it's different across the different cultures and it's i don't know there's a tiktoker oh my god i just remember this i think she's a tiktoker maybe she's a whatever she's this uh she's a white lady and i think she adopted a little black girl or something like that and it's like and she's a stylist i might get the details of this wrong but i I keep seeing her in my feed and she learned how to style you know the 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 the, the african-american styles hairstyles for her daughter or her Mm. adopted daughter and I was like, that's cool. And because it is very different. And then Japanese hair versus like white people are very different. Yeah. Right. And so, I mean, I guess like the, probably the best people are like stylists in countries like Canada, America or England or whatever, where they have such a diversity of people and you get to experience a different hairstyles. But yeah, in Japan, it's basically one type. Yeah. Right. And so they do just kind of get used to it. Yeah. So I'm lucky that the, if you close your eyes and feel my hair, it feels like Japanese hair. It's just brown in color. So like the stylists have no problem with my hair, but you with the cat hair. Yeah, I got cat What does your hair. wife say about it? It's like a cat. Uh, I don't know. She's never really said anything about my hair. Mm. 
She likes the color. <laughs> she likes the color. Yeah. Your wife has a uh, lighter color hair. She 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 she, she colors it. Though. She colors it, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, of course. Yeah. Well, it's, Japanese kids, if you guys don't know this, they sometimes will have brown hair when they're born, mm-hmm. uh, and it'd be like, oh my god, is are, you know, is he or she mixed? They're not mixed. And then as the the child gets older, it darkens. Right. So it's really it's really it's kind of cool. I mean, the same thing happened with us though. Yeah, we were both born, born blonde. Right. Literally, this isn't a lie. I was actually born white, blonde, like Legolas blonde. Yeah. And you were as well. I didn't believe you until I saw the, the photo. Yeah, I had very blonde hair yeah. and then just as I got older, I got darker. So my mom and my dad both had black hair and my dad had curly black hair. And I was born with straight white hair, bl- uh, blonde hair, and my dad looked at my mom and was like, "What did you do?" I'm not joking. My my dad seriously. I think until the day he died, thought that I was not his son, and I'm cool with that. <laughs> it's a little sad, but but if you have like five kids, I mean, I I have a total of seven. I'm one of seven, but my father has had five kids, and if you like look at all the kids and only one of them, one of these things, not, not like, like the, the other, other. <laughs> right? You start one to think. Hmm. Anyway, go to your next story. All right, this one's not really so happy, but um, oh, the fish story. My employees were killed. Japanese pond owner breaks into tears after 3,000 fish die in robbery. So, Kazunori Yamada runs an indoor fishing pond uh, in Gifu Ken, in Gifu Prefecture. And apparently, somebody broke into uh, the, the building while they weren't open. And the burglars only stole a few thousand yen uh, in cash, which is less than $100, along with their Wi Fi. Uh, router and some hard drives but like really they didn't take anything that was worth so they they broke in to steal money but there wasn't a, there wasn't really any money in there yeah. and then they took the router and the hard drive because the hard drive had the surveillance footage on it right and some 3000 fish uh died as a result of it because the the air pump uh broke in the process they cut the power uh, they cut the power that yeah that's what it was the power line was cut so the air pump stopped and if you know anything about cram fish crammed into an aquarium like they breathe air out of the water right so if you're constantly you have to constantly pump air into the aquarium otherwise they will suffocate and that's what happened and so to uh the pond owner he considered the fish his employees and he had he cared for them for five years so it's like having a pet for five years even though there are 3,000 of them, like there is pets, there is employees. He raised them and it, he said it was really crushing. But I mean, a loss of that number is, you know, big. And he's also an older gentleman. So, I mean, I could see it. It's really sad. But that, but I, let's play devil advocate on this, right? If you are in charge of the, the life of an animal, you would think that you would have some sort of backup for this pump. Like some sort of like if the power, what, what happens if there's a typhoon and the power went out? Mm, right so like that's true the dude the dude maybe he didn't have the the, the money for it but he sh- i think that he should have had some sort of backup i mean we have backups for our servers like like there's a giant uh uninterruptible power supply right there in front of me that weighs like uh 55 pounds and it will power everything in here that's important if there's a, in the event of a blackout and it has already many times yeah that's true so i don't know i mean like I, yeah we can say like he should have been more careful i guess but i mean Apparently, the loss in the fish was a total of around like forty-five thousand dollars worth of fish. Damn, that's a lot of. That's money. a sad story. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that sucks. And the petty crime is not on the rise, but it is definitely making the news more often these days. Funny story about Gifu. I don't know anything about Gifu. Uh, I've been there, I think, once. But the only thing that I really know about Gifu is that they are. There's this um, graphic that was circulating around on Japanese Twitter like six years ago, mm-hmm. and it's like breast size by prefecture in Japanese and Gifu Ken had the biggest breasts number one number one so if you guys ever want to if you're into that thing Gifu prefecture that's literally the only thing I know about Gifu prefecture. yeah that's the only thing I know too <laughs> uh, want to become a swordsmith apprenticeship bleh, apprenticeship opens in Japan but the fine print might shock you I don't understand why this is shocking but explain to our audience so there is a guy who makes traditional crafts, uh, swords, yep. katanas yep. in Japan. Yep. And in the fine print to become an apprentice at his shop, he asks that you have work from 8.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. five days a week and possibly some weekends for at least five years without pay. So I think the shocking thing is that you have to work like 
a normal job worth of hours for five years and not get any money out I don't, of it. I don't get why this is surprising to anybody. Like, because it's an apprenticeship. It's yeah. not a job. That's true. I mean, like, dude, there, I don't want to say the names, but there, let's just say one of my friends wanted to apprentice with some very traditional cultural people in Japan. Okay. And this person approached them for, I think, two years before they even agreed to meet with him. Mm. And then once the meeting happened, the apprenticeship happened, and it was like very, very strict. I mean, like, it's Japanese apprenticeships, man. They're not, they don't just hand them out like, you know, coupons at the supermarket. Yeah, I guess that's true. If you put it that way, like, at first I was kind of thinking of it, of it like interning at a job. And then, like, oh, we got an intern at the school. Yeah. Only for a week, but like, Kyoka has been like putting him to work. Yeah, he, he did a good job. Did he? Yeah, I think so. He's, it's actually Alex's son. <laughs> <laughs> Alex's son, who is way taller than Josh. <laughs> yeah. He he helped join uh, one of the classes for a bit because uh, some of the other teachers were busy and they couldn't come to uh, class. So he helped me out. And, yeah. He's a good kid. Yeah, I do like a, him. Did a good job. Really good kid. Anyway, anyways, this is apprentice thing. It doesn't. It doesn't make any sense to me because, like, dude, if if you're a Jedi and you go to the Padawan Academy, you're not like you pay me. It's like, dude, you're apprenticing to be a Jedi. But it makes me think, like, well, until Anakin shows up, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I was thinking more like, like, if you're gonna be an an apprentice uh, at the Jedi Academy, they're probably gonna give those kids food and board, right? They're not going to be like. Well, what's the what's the deal with that? I mean, do they? Uh, there's some, it depends on the apprenticeship, but some people some apprenticeships are like, no, you pay for everything you you know. Like I don't know. I I think what I'm thinking of is like you know there's there's people who, for example who went to go study um uh, uh what is it called uh yoga in India, right or or you know Buddhism in India or whatever, and so like you got these rich European Westerner people Americans who go to learn this stuff. They take their affluence with them to that place and support themselves. Right. Because the thing that they're getting is the knowledge from that teacher. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Gakuni, in, in contrast, if you go to university for four years, you pay them. That's true. I mean, if somebody told you university was free for four years, you'd be like, woohoo. So what, the, what is this? Well, I don't get it. That's true. You've, you've convinced me. <laughs> I, was, I guess I was thinking of it more like a job than anything else. If you're learning a skill and you come out at the end with a skill that's going to like, you know, you can support yourself or do whatever you want to do. You know, I don't get it. I don't get I don't understand. I mean, Gekuni, I think that those people should be paying for the apprenticeship. That's yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, how necessary is it nowadays, though, to be a swordsmith? Like, I don't know how 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 probable is World War Three? Well, I think it's likely, but I don't what's, think what's World War Three was swords. Well, no, 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 no. What's the quote from Einstein? I don't know what weapons we'll use in World War, uh, War War in the next World War, but the war after that will be fought with sticks and stones. Uh, so it's like if, it, if we take out everybody. So they're playing the long game. The like, long game. Like, they're like five chess moves ahead. You don't even know it. He's like <laughs> Einstein said, "Sticks and stones." Well, I got swords ready. I got a samurai sword, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, our last story for today Wait, is... Wait, before you get that, it reminds me of when one of my friends, his wife got him a samurai sword for like a birthday present. Was it sharp? Yeah. Because in America, come on. It's like oh, weapons. Oh, in America. Yeah, okay. it's like whatever you want. And so like, I asked the wife, I was like, how long before you put a hole in the wall? She's like, I think it was like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, continue. Rock a baby goat to she... Blah. I'm going to have to cut that. <laughs> Don't cut it. Why do you always <laughs> cut your mistakes? I... Leave it in. It makes it, it's like, it's like, you know, happy, happy little mistakes. Happy trees. Happy trees. Okay. Have you ever seen his son do a video? He's so weird. Isn't he like really dark? No, he's super pervy. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. All those happy little trees. No. Oh, there's like a comparison video on YouTube between the dad and the son. What's his, what's the dad's name? Uh, Bob Ross. Bob Ross. Yeah. And his son and like Bob Ross is super hippie and faded and like the son's like pervy as hell. It's just like, Ooh, no, it's different vibes. Continue. Sorry. Rock a baby goat to sleep and mission is free. Cute challenge goes viral online. So everyone's a winner at this Japanese farm. If you're looking to unwind and de-stress from the worries of the world, a cute animal video can be just the thing to make your problems melt away. Here in Japan, baby goats have become the latest animal to soothe our souls thanks to a clever new initiative by Mutsu 
Zawa Goat Ranch in Chosegun, Chiba Prefecture. Chiba. So, better watch out, Disneyland. Have you ever seen a baby goat in real life? No. They are the cutest things in the world. They're so cute. Now, do you know how well goats can climb? Well, I mean, they have goat yoga. Well, that's weird. That's different. That's white people. Why? Why? <laughs> you know, yeah, that's pretty weird. <laughs> there, there, I think it, uh, I forgot what it's called. There was either a subreddit or somewhere on the internet. It's like why white people or something like that. <laughs> and it's just like, what are you doing? But anyway, uh, goats can climb anything. They're crazy. Right. Even at like a one degree. Yeah, they really can. So the little baby goats, right? They're like springs. They can jump really high. Yeah. And they don't really walk. They kind of like jump around. Mm. So they look like, you know how South Park characters get animated when they walk? It looks like that. They're the cutest things in the world. And they're like, you know how like a normal goat makes like a bass sound. It's like, eh, eh, it's like kind of guttural. Yeah. But like the baby ones, they're like really high pitched. It's really cute. And mm. they're like, especially like the, the all white ones that are just like super like, 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 like little albino, albino. Goats, they're so cute. There's yeah. tons of videos on Reddit about this. Their eyes are weird, though. Yeah. Their pupils. Yeah. Square. I never really noticed that until I watched Zootopia. And then uh, I looked yeah. at that and I was like, ooh, yeah, that is how those are. Anyway, so they uh, created a challenge that if you can rock the goat to sleep, then you get free admission into this uh, this farm area, this ranch. Is that like the, the Texas steak that if you eat it in under an hour, you get it for free, but if you don't, you have to pay like $400? There are a lot of challenges like that. I want to try one, but not not with a goat. You know, you are literally the living garbage disposal. Like we go to Thank we you. we'll go to like a restaurant for like three people, him and his wife and me, and so so they'll like they'll sunning boom they'll put out like three persons worth three of portions, food yeah. like for everything, and like I will literally like eat maybe half of the first two dishes, and then everything after that just like gets defaulted to Josh and he just eats everything happily. Yeah, yeah. And then my wife eats like three fourths of the meal, and then I'm like, I'll I'll eat the rest. <laughs> No, like, because whenever they see me, because I'm giant, right? So they're just like, oh, he's going to eat a lot. I'm like, I don't really eat a lot. Yeah. I mean, I eat breakfast. I eat lunch. Those are fairly hefty. And then dinner, I'm just like, drinking is the main thing for me. I don't really eat that much. I was going to say that's healthy until you got to the drinking part. Like, yeah, eating a big breakfast and lunch is pretty good. I mean, thanks to you. I want to give credit where credit is due. I was always searching for like a better, because I'd always eat like sunny side up eggs and toast, but I, I wanted to get rid of the bread because I don't like bread. I don't want to do carbs. If I do carbs, I want to do healthy carbs. And you yeah. like, eat oatmeal. And I was like, oatmeal is disgusting. And I, the only thing that, in my image, in my brain, the only thing that you put with oatmeal is like honey or milk or other sweet stuff, which I don't eat. Right. And then you had the example that you got from one of your students. You're like, why don't you put miso soup in it? Mm -hmm. So it's like okayu, right. but with oats. And I was like, that sounds disgusting. Every day. I eat it every day. It's healthy. Yeah. Savory. I, uh my my breakfast is a little boring. I just eat it with hot water. It's just, Ew. Oh, yeah. I sometimes add a banana, but yeah, I don't eat it because it's good. I learned something from uh from listening to a Rory Sutherland talk. Which you you should definitely check check him out. He's really interesting. Um, they have a thing in Europe called I forgot the name of the brand name, but it's like a it's like a water spout where they can get instant boiling hot water from the tap. Okay. What do you think about that? Isn't that fucking cool? I guess. I mean, I have an electric. It's called a quote. It's not a cooker, but it's a quick cooker cooker. Like quick, quick Q U O O K E R. I think it's called a quicker cooker or something like that. I mean, I have an electric kettle in no, my no, house. So. Instant. Uh, you know, but like hundred C instantly with a press of a button. Okay. I mean, I don't really use hot water that much. So I just, I don't, I don't know. I, I never knew that product existed until I listened to that Rory Sutherland talk. And I was just like, what the fuck is that? And I Google it. And everybody in Europe apparently has this. It's really cool because they drink a lot of tea, uh. tea drinking assholes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love you guys. Europeans. I actually, I, I tend to hang out. With, I, I actually, most of my friends are from Europe. I've, I've noticed this. Like, I don't know about you, but like Alex. Yeah. Although Alex claims that he doesn't have any friends. So what are we? Well, I think that's like a European thing, right? An like, England thing. Yeah. I think Carl, he's from Sweden. That's true. Yeah, you know, all my friends are like Europeans. Do you have Do you have any other friends? <laughs> I mean, no, like... I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, mostly most of my friends are Japanese, but like, yeah, my non-Japanese friends are like, yeah, mostly European or or they're my staff. Yeah. I think I, I think we employ mostly American native speakers, and we have one Brit now. We have two Brits technically, but one's on maternity leave. Right. Yeah. Never had an Australian or a New Zealander. Not because we don't want them. It's just they're just few and far between. Yeah, I don't think I've ever met one in Kagoshima. 
There used to be a Kiwi here, and he used oh. to say Steven. Steven. Yeah, do I it. remember him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you know, he told me he actually motivated me to start working out because he's like, "You have no body hair." I was like, "Nope." And he's like, "And you don't work out." And I was like, I don't understand the connection here. What are you saying to me? And he's like, because he worked out all the time. He had, you know, nice, you know, but he was hairier than a bear. Right. And so you like, can't see the muscles. Right. So he's like, if you wanted to see me sexy on the beach, I'd have to go get waxed for a day. Yeah. He's like, you could just do it. And start, that's why I started working out. I was just like, oh, that's, that's true. That's right. I should probably do something to, you know, health or something. Right. So I go to the gym after that. I'm serious. That was that's all why. the convincing I needed. It's like, Mitch, you don't have any body hair. You should go to the gym. I was like, I like the way you think. You have body hair. I do, but it's not a lot. It's <laughs> why are you being all defensive? Just own it. No, it's not that much. Like, the one that I don't want to name his name, but a British person who used to work for us. There's not a lot of people that fit that category, yeah. but but like, oh my god, I felt but sorry. one is a woman. <laughs> well, not the woman, the non-woman, other one. Uh, I felt sorry for him because every time we go to the beach, he like was like conscious about his body hair, so he always wore a shirt or something. Yeah. Like, I never had to think about that because, again, like me and all of my brothers, we don't have any body hair because we Japanese DNA. Yeah, your problem is when you go to the beach, everyone's like, the beacons are lit. The beacons are lit. So when I was flying into Vegas, I saw this like uh, solar array of all these mirrors in a circle. and They were all blasting the sun to this like central collection collector thingy in a tower. Yeah. That thing was glowing as bright as the sun was in the sky. And I remember thinking, is that what I look like when I go to the beach? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. I can just like turn my chest around and like shine light in people's eyes. Yeah. <laughs> That's been our show today, guys. Uh, for more dumb, r- ridiculous, uh, topical Japanese stuff, check out any of our other shows. Uh, next week's episode should be pretty interesting. Oh, we haven't confirmed that yet. So I don't want to promise anything. Oh, Okay. But if we're if we can, we want to do a episode next week that might be on a location. Maybe if we can work it out, but it should be okay. We'll see. It depends on some factors and the weather. But it should be okay. Uh and then also next week we'll be with Alex. Uh it'll be good to see him, you know, after his uh close contact having to stay home stuff. Right. So he'll come back. Talk to Alex. I'll ask him if he has any chest hair. Probably does. I don't. He really. seems like he has. I don't think that he's the type of person. If you ask, ask him like that, he'll just like coyishly answer. I think he'd be like, "What's wrong with you, mate?" <laughs> so anyway, well, anyway, next week we'll see what happens. But it should be fun. If not, then it's Josh's fault and blame him. Yep. Anyway, uh, we talked about a lot of things today. If you guys have any comments or questions, uh, let us know. I'd actually like to know your guys' opinion about one. Our boy who stole all the money from the COVID people becoming a YouTuber. What do you guys think about that? Two. Would you or have you ever given hair? Uh, by the way, you didn't mention that before. It was mostly for chemotherapy patients. No, I did say that. Oh, well, You're I was just not attention. listening. It's okay. Have you ever donated hair? Uh, and finally, three, what do we think about the, the guy with the, with the fish? Like, is it just tragic or is he should have taken more responsibility in that situation? And then finally, four, would you apprentice for four years to become a swordsman? If I got paid, I would. You're such a millennial. Are you a what are you Gen Z or whatever? I'm a the millennial. Fuck? Are I'm you? Same am as I you. a millennial? You're a millennial. I think I just barely made it in the train. No. The door shut behind me. They're just like, I am the cut off. I'm not a boomer. I know that. Anyway, guys, this been our show. Uh, if you want to be our Patreon, check us out. Check out the links in the video description. There's always uh, links to all the articles that we talk about in the video description. Blah blah blah. See you guys next week. Bye everybody. Bye.